Nat's Necker's Yard, or Nat's Garden, I suppose, and my incredibly shonky paint setup. Now, don't get me wrong, I have moved on from this in, the, in my uh, normal channel, only just, but I have moved on for it, uh, from it, and I now have a compressor and a spray gun, and I am trying to work out how to do it. However, the entire point of this is what can you do with minimal kit, with spray cans, and is it better than what Del Bollocks puts out on his channel? because I am freaking adamant that it is. Um, so this is a zero cost solution. <laughs> and that is the point of this. Um, so what are we gonna do? I'm gonna go for a bit of a tail coat. So last night off camera, I did um, do some filling. Uh, two reasons I did it off camera. One, I am shit at it. Um, I'm getting better, don't get me wrong. Um, uh, so small amounts, uh, getting the ratios right let it cure then sand it down the main reason i've done it really is the fact that i'm going to end up doing it again i don't do it often enough to build up any expertise and i'm sure there's people out there that can get it right first time i can't i'm not that good i'm not that practice so i've done it once to get the base uh, i'm now going to put a uh, a tail coat on of um of primer which is warming up inside in a bucket because i always warm my paint before i use it i think it makes such a difference and it's such an easy step to do and by warming paint, it's in a bucket with warm water. There's nothing technical there at all. Um, so that's warming up. I've done some half decent, I think, filling. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just whack it over, and that tail coat will do. Um, uh, well, clues in the title. It'll tell me I'm shit, uh, and it'll tell me the bits I've missed, uh, and that's what I'm doing it for. So that's, and I will film, uh, you know, playing around with those bits, or, or I'll probably just jump in and out a little bit, to be honest. Right, if you hear crackling, it's not because it's about to rain, because even I'm not foolhardy enough to um, try and paint in the rain. Um, but uh, one of the key issues with Dell in a spray booth, and it's not him sanding and spraying crap everywhere, um, it's the fact that he's doing it in his fleece, in his jeans. Um, if you're in a professional environment like that, then wear a suit, wear a paper suit. Um, less of a push to do it in your garden, frankly, but what I can do is not wear shedding clothing. So the best thing that doesn't shed is something waterproof on, say Gore-Tex. I'm not, I'm not gonna try and kid myself or anyone else this is Gore-Tex, but it doesn't shed. So yeah, so if the audio is a bit crackly, that's why. Right, I'm gonna give this a bit of a uh, tack off wipe down uh, and bang on the, um, uh, the primer. Right, so there we go. <laughs> All set up, tack cloth off, nice warm Halford's finest I build. Um, I'm not going to go ape shit on it. Uh, by warm, I mean from a bucket of uh, a bucket from a container of warm water. Um, you know, I know I'm holding it; it's above room temperature, but it's not burning my hands. Uh, right. All the shit floating off my table. I should clean that off, and I will do before I do proper paint. I'll probably just flip it over. Right, technique. You want to try and maintain a common distance. So you don't want to be doing the Dell technique. Yeah. So nice and even. I'm not going thick layers. You are better off going Greek kings, and Menelaus. Look at that. Benefits of a classical education. No, I saw it in a film. Um, probably with Brad Pitt. So, just going light, not kicking the tits out of it. Keeping the can moving nice and quickly. Some overlapping, but frankly, at this stage, you can be a little bit hit and miss. But you're going for a nice mechanical, you know, 
I see you, I sound like I'm teaching. I'm not teaching. This is what I do, keeping it nice and reasonably quick. I remember I'm on bad, bad, bare metal here. If I just hold it and spray, it's just gonna gather and run down. And I have to say, actually, it's not looking too bad. As usual, I'll always caveat this with, I am not after perfection, just better. Although, in this case, it will be just better bracket than Dell does in a professional spray booth. Twice. <laughs> right. I can see some bits coming through already, which is good. That's what I'm doing this for. And that'll do me. Right. I'll be back. I'm going to let that dry, bang it again, and then see what we've ended up with. Right, that's been a few minutes. Uh, you may see me wandering around with a bit of tissue in my hand. It's not because I've got a cold, but periodically it's just wiping the nozzle because it's a spray can. It just gets residue on the end. Also make sure that, because I'm keeping this in a warm bath, that I'm not going to splash water over it. So trying to keep track of what I've done and what I haven't. So I tend to try one edge then a side, then a side, then the front edge or whatever. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent or reasonably consistent. I just want to try and make sure you get this, roughly the same amount of paint on each bit. Really. Nothing overly technical. Now, I have got the marks where the original black and silver were. Um, that doesn't bother me in the slightest because um, I want to follow those lines with my own paint scheme when I get going. So it's actually not a drama and actually it's going to help me later because it will be good guidelines. Yeah, I'm just starting to pick up on bits that need a little bit more work, which is great. That's what this is for. I don't get me wrong, I'd love it if I didn't have to and I got it right, I got it bang on first time, but I'm not good enough for that. That's that's a that's a trade, that's a talent. I'm just a tit in a shed. That's why these things cost money, people. Uh, everyone's got families, mortgages, etc. and it slightly rails me when Again, it's Dell and it's slight whingy and slightly rails me when he complains about how much things cost in a mechanic shop. Well, yeah, you're not paying for that service or that bike. You're paying for all the ones that he or she has done before. So they do yours properly. Well, that does piss me off when they charge you a fortune. They don't do it properly. They <laughs> do it any better than you could do. We're getting somewhere, people. And it's always the inner edges that I say you miss, that I miss. So it's just worthwhile going around them again. Oops, somebody's just died outside. Right. Um, people give me hassle about not cleaning my nozzle. I don't if I'm coming straight back to it. But in this case, because it is likely to be a little while, because I've got this to square away, I will clean the nozzle. If I clean the nozzle, invert the can, because Dale, you might want to listen to this one, when a can's upside down, it doesn't get paint out. That's just the accelerant. So try and keep your paint, when you're painting, keep it vertical. Simple skills. Right, uh, that'll do me. I'm going to let that dry completely. Take it inside in the warm because it is quite chilly. 
Uh, it's not the ideal temperatures to paint in, but you know, so be it. We're garden tinkerers here or garage tinkerers. Uh, and then we'll have a good examine, good rub down, work out where we need to put some more work in. And I can see a few little bits that, you know, don't, don't really bother me, frankly. But let's try and get this thing right, shall we? Uh, you may also notice I've gone back to the old faithful ball gag to stop paint going in the tank. Thanks, Charlie. I'm not sure you'll want this one back. Although it hasn't got any teeth marks in it, mate. Cheers. Oh. Right, so back to my trusty workbench. Uh, my bins. Um, it's pretty good, actually, I have to say. I'm just going to give it a rub down. There's some little like blemishes, as there always are. There's some deeper scratches in there. So the way to get at them, you know, one or two ways really, is uh, either a minus or a plus. So either sand down to get it away or build up to build up on it. But first things first, let's um, give it a rub down and see where we really are. Right, so I'm not entirely sure if this is filming properly because half my screen seems to have died. But I've um, got some quite deep scratches on the back there. I've gone a bit heavy there, frankly, but um, it'll do. There's a tiny hole on the edge there. A um, couple of bits there where I didn't quite get the Yamaha sign off. I think that's fine without fill, but we shall see. And I've tried a couple of bits on the edge there. Uh, that's the stuff that I've used. Um, top tip, don't use it. <laughs> <coughs> it was, I think, Wilco's cheapest. Um, uh, for those outside the UK, Wilco's think, what, Home Depot, but cheaper. <laughs> um, main reason not to use it is the hardens the same colour, which is a real pain in the arse uh, to work it out. But it works fine. So, uh, yeah, let that cure off. Uh, have at it with a bit more sandpaper. Cool. OK, so we're back and I've given it a good rub down, a good clean down. It's really hard to film because half my screen has gone black. <laughs> But, let's go for another quick waz and see if we get, we'll see what we get. Right, how are we doing? Not too bad. I've only spotted one, uh, two places that are going to need a bit more. That back edge seems to have sorted itself out. I say sorted itself out, we've sorted it out. There's that hole. The fact that I've just asked where that hole was is a good sign. Because I can't see it anymore. We're good. Right. Back in the bath. In fact, I'll give it a quick clean because I don't think I'm going to be doing it straight away. Right, so we had a hole in the edge, which is gone. That side's looking pretty fantastic where there was the original dent. Oops. It's a little bit... Scrappy on that corner. I think I can tidy that up a little bit more. Maybe a tiny bit more on that side as well. Mm, it's a bit scratchy. Kind of holes up there. A bit of scratching across there, which I hadn't noticed before. I may just, may just um, high build and see how I get on with that. So the only bit I've been, I really need to have a play with again is just on that front edge. And actually, yeah, I'll let it dry, give it a quick go, and then we'll go hammer and tong over the top, see how we get on. I think, I mean, you shouldn't use paint to fill scratches, but I think we'll get away with what we've got there. Right, cool. Let's let it cure.
Right, so there we go, that was three decent coats. Uh, let it cure off completely. Give it a, a bit of a light rub down with 1500, just because you would always get like um, flecks, tiny flecks out of that can, out of the rattle cans. So, and that's not going hell for leather, that's not going through the um, primer. It's literally wait your hand stop when it stops making noise because you'll you'll hear a <laughs> it's a really difficult thing to film but um easy thing to do so nice gentle brush off and then just one more quick coat of primer now i'm gonna let that dry and crack on with a black right let's go for some base coat or some color i suppose gone for the good old classic of Halford satin. Uh, I would have gone matte but they didn't have any and actually they only had one and a half of these or a 500 and a 300. Um, so we'll see how we get. I, I'm under the, what am I saying? I don't think one can is enough, put it that way. I've put a better mat on, can you see? Yeah, you can. I have covered that shite underneath because I certainly don't want that in the paint. I'm only going for about 50% coverage on this. I mean, and it's not about, you know, a dust coat to help the rest of the paint stick. That's what the primer's doing. But it's just a good way to build up and try and avoid the dreaded drips. So you can see how quick my hand is moving. Years of teenage practice. Now it is important when you start getting near the top coat to keep wiping because you will end up, it's only a spray can, it will spit. It'll probably still spit but you reduce the chances of it just by cleaning the nozzle every so often. Not after every spray, it doesn't need that, that's overkill. Now it's really tempting to just go heavy quick and it will run and it will look shit. Uh, whereas one day I'm just going to stop there because I love that look. <laughs> but uh, it'll kind of ruin the point of doing something to compete with a, a tit with all the kit. No idea if I then just completely half assed a paint job. I'm just making sure I get the bottom edges. That's not a formalised technique. That's just, I'm a dick and I routinely forget. Right, that'll do for first. Right, let's go for another light coat. So more about coverage than shine at this point. Yeah, that'll do me. All right, a few minutes later, I'm warm and the can is warm. I'm gonna start doing a bit wetter coats now. So keeping the can upright. sweeping it up a surface. Oh, I think cramping my thumb. I have got one of those um, like handle grip thingies, but I just don't like it. I, I, uh, it's better on the hand, but I don't get the sensation. That is the first wet coat on. I did try and film it, but it didn't start. Um, and we are starting to get there. Getting good coverage. And we are doing good. Right, let that 
dry off. And we'll see how we go. All right, it's been a good few minutes. Let's go for a second coat of base. Right, that is second base coat loaded. And camera shut itself off for some reason then. Oh, just drop. Dish it. It's getting there. It's a little bit on the orange peely side, but that's what you get for painting outside in these conditions. But fundamentally, it's easy to deal with on rub down. Right, so that's two coats of satin done. That's a bit Del Boyd S actually. I don't know if you can hear the birds in the background. That might have to do. Tweet, 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 ripple smooth, tweet, tweet. Um, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Let's get some more on. We'll let that cure and then get some more on. Right. So on the little can, there is some still left in the 500, but when it start, when these rattle cans start getting low, they start spitting. Um, and particularly at this stage, you don't, you really don't want that. So it's just easier to. I'm not going to throw it away. Always, you always need a little bit. So I'll keep it because I'm frugal. Tight. <laughs> right. Just do these edges again. Right, I have no idea why, but my fecking camera keeps turning itself off. I'm never quite sure what it gets to. I don't know why. It's a new thing. It's just started today. Um, so that's what? Three coats. In fact, Let's do it properly. And do it Del Boy styly. I feel a right dick doing that. <laughs> um, I might have one more coat in me. Um, I'm about to get dragged out walking the dog. But that'll do for now. Uh, and that'll do for the weekend, chaps and chapesses. Um, yeah, so what am I going to do? I'm going to do some... Blue That's why I just keep stopping, because my battery's about to die. <laughs> idiot um yeah happy with that so far i think uh obviously let that cure i am going to go for following those original color lines so a, a zip across and then a band around i'm going to do that uh, in a color and in an effect now those of my regular viewers will probably guess what effect <laughs> and what maybe maybe even what color um but not red um but i have done it before and then after that, of course, it's lacquer. And because it's a tank, 2K clear, um, I will order some Pro XL 2K clear uh, this evening to make sure it's here for the weekend uh, and good petrol proof in hardcover. And then it's the polish. And then we'll be able to do a bit of a comparison because by my reckoning, so far, this has cost me, battery keep, the battery's running out. I reckon this has cost me 30 quid so far as opposed to whatever you pay to hire a booth. <laughs> Cheers all, I'll catch you later.